Oh. Another ball that goes careering into the trees on the right and it's all because of a fault I've made and you might be the person who also hits the shot like this that goes careering into the trees or the trouble on the left as well but today's lesson we're going to fix it guys I'm Matt Fryer I'm PGA Golf Coach I want you to get better at the game join me here on the channel free lessons every week hit the subscribe button and let's fix this club out for you now so in both those shots that you've just seen there there was one big fault that I made happen throughout my backswing that I see countless times when people come to me for lessons that causes us to really have an issue with the driver now our drivers don't have a lot of loft on them maybe nine degrees ten degrees twelve degrees whatever it may be it's not got a lot of loft and if we're changing it and manipulating it throughout our backswing we're altering the loft that's on the club and what we're also doing is altering where that club is essentially pointing because as I align myself to my target being the tallest tree in the distance there, I have, hopefully, my club pointing out down towards this. And then as I set my body to parallel to that target, I'm now in a position where, as I return this driver, I want my face to be looking somewhere down there. What I see from a lot of amateurs is that as they set up to the driver, because we want to hit it a little bit harder, we want to hit it a little bit further, and don't get me wrong, hitting your driver with a bit of speed and launching it out there, it's probably one of the best bits of the game. When you get that driver that you launch past your mate, and it finds the fairway, you feel great, you're gonna be talking about it in the bar afterwards for some time. But what we do in doing that is that we get all out of whack and we think, right, okay, I've got a great setup, everything's looking good here, I've got the correct angles, I'm gonna smash this golf ball now. And what we end up doing is throwing the club either back inside very early and really using our hands and our arms to drive the takeaway. So I see a lot of people in one camp where I end up rolling the face too much and we get the face here looking up towards the sky, or I see other people sort of snatching and I end up getting the face too shut here. So we get into the point where I'm either too open or I'm too closed. I don't maintain a pretty neutral face, allowing me to actually get the club and the face back on the ball in the appropriate manner. So what I want us to try and do is just find a little bit of a, a neutral position in our backswing and a little checkpoint, and it's so easy to do. And one of the great players that I think is a great example of doing this is Justin Thomas. Whenever we see him out on the golf course, and especially with driver, whenever he's having a little warm-up or a little waggle before his swing, he takes back and he stops. And what we see is that the face is in a great position. What we don't see is that there is a load of extreme to it, either extremely closed or extremely open. Because if we're in either of these camps here, what I'm going to have to do on the way down is rely on timing to really square that face up and your driver swing the impact is going to be so quick if you don't marry that up that ball is coming off with speed and as we saw from those two previous shots it's coming off at speed and it's coming off at the wrong direction at speed what we want to try and do is feel that the face stays pretty neutral so when we do deliver it into impact hopefully it's looking somewhere back towards our target. So real simple for me. If you're really struggling with curvature on the golf ball, and a great way to do this, and even what you can see here from this one, if you can just pick it up, this will be a telltale sign if you've got really bad face. You can see the ball mark here on my club face, because what's actually happened there is I've sort of almost, I've almost glanced the ball like this, taking some of that cover off. If I get a true strike and it's compressing the face, it wouldn't leave that. But that comes, like I say, from this flash in the pan release of the face, trying to square it back up, and we don't want that. So all we want to try and do is to find a little neutral position and then trust the club to come back around from there. So as we take our setup, like I say, hopefully we've got our face looking somewhere towards our intended target. What I want you to really work on now is feeling two positions for me. And these are gonna be positions that you just rehearse. And the first one being is when the club gets to horizontal here. When that club is horizontal to the ground, I want to try and see that the face is not completely straight, but what I want to try and do is mirror my spine angle here. So I'm not overly closed from it, 
or I'm not overly open. And also what I want to try and do here is see that the hands are pretty much in line with that club head here. I don't want them too far out in front. I don't want them up here. I don't want them anywhere back around here. As long as they're somewhere close to being in line with the face, having the toe just slightly over the heel, we're in a good point because if I can get it to here and feel just in that little rehearsal that I'm up into that position each time, from there then when I get up to the top I'm going to see it being pretty square. What I then want to see is that I get down to the next horizontal point just before impact. I want to try and feel that I'm in a similar position. I might have the club head a little bit back behind my hands at this point because I want to try and get it a little bit from the inside and a little bit from the up. But again what I don't want to see is that in my takeaway I've gone excessively let's say open and then on the way down I've thrown it out in front of me trying to square this face up because that's not going to lead to good drive. So real simple, couple of rehearsals. We go back, we find it in line with our hands with that face mirroring somewhere near our spine. We carry on up, we carry on down and see that we get a similar-ish position as we come through because then when I deliver into impact as we can see now, I'm getting pretty square. Real simple, I just get my students to go one, two, three. One, two, three. And if we get used to this, like I say, it's gonna take a little bit of practice down at the driving range. From there, what we should start to do is actually gain some club face control and also some club face awareness. A lot of the times when I speak to students and say, well, where's your club face? They look at me and say, what are you on about my face? I don't, don't know what you're on about. Let's see if we can actually start to feel where this is in that backswing point and that downswing point to allow us to get it somewhere near neutral. Because if we do, I'm not saying that you're gonna get the perfect straight shot or the tight little draw. What you will do though, is start to actually find some consistency in your strike and you'll start to find some consistency in where this club face is aiming. So as we take it out to the golf course, all it needs to transition into is just that little Justin Thomas rehearsal. I'll just have a little waggle from there. And then as I go through, what I should see now is a shot that looks a million times better than those two that we hit at the start of the video. If you are struggling with that driver, please, please, please make sure that you just give that simple little drill a go because you'll get some awareness and you'll start to see that the middle of the golf club actually becomes a little bit of a friend to you. So guys, check it out. Make sure you go and practice it. Get better with that driver and as well, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you have liked this lesson as well, hey, why not give another one a watch over here and improve your game with me. Thanks for watching. See you in your next lesson.